Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike, and this is a spoiler-free review of Trap. I am half alive. Yes, it is true. It is early. We're getting ready to go on a trip. Family's literally getting in the shower and whatnot right now as I yell curse words at my camera. But I didn't think I was going to be able to see Trap. We had the Blink-182 concert last night. It was amazing. Can't wait to talk about it in the live stream. It was awesome. But uh, yeah, I did get to see it, so I'm squeezing this one in. And... Um, and <laughs> that's what we're doing. This will be spoiler free, but M. Night Shyamalan's Trap, you either have a love or hate relationship pretty much with M. Night Shyamalan, depending on who you are. I have a love relationship with him. Seriously, he's wonderful. Bed and also, mainly, there's always a twist ending, you know what I mean? Even in the bedroom. No, I think that... Um, I love that he always swings for the fences, you know? I love that I love how weird his movies are. I love how every character just seems a little off and broken. But that's I love weird yet entertaining stuff. You know what I mean? Like I don't like weird croissant, artsy fartsy, no one gets it, you're so cool because nobody understands your movie type shit. I like entertaining weird, and that's what M. Night Shyamalan is. So that being said, I also love Josh Hartnett. I, I'm a huge Josh Hartnett dude. I love the Hartnett essence. That's not the thing that people say, but I, I just love Josh Hartnett so much ever since um, Guaranteed to Jack You Up and Comb Your Hair happened way back in the day, and I love that what he's done with his career. He's kind of taken control of it and been like, I'm just going to do movies that I want to do, and um, that, you know, working for Dimension in the in the early 2000s will fuck up anyone, to be honest with you, but I just did an article about him and his career in horror on Bloody Disgusting. You can check that out on any of our social media. Just go to bloodydisgusting.com. I'm losing the ability to speak. I may be having a stroke mid-review. This movie set up perfect for me. I was super excited. It's one of my most anticipated of the year, and in the movie, if you haven't seen the trailer, which I'm sure you have, he takes his daughter to a concert, and it's one of M. Night Shyamalan's kids doing the concert, by the way, which she did great. That was cool. Um, but it's it's like a Taylor Swift type situation where it's basically Taylor Swift. There's all these young girls that are obsessed over this this singer lady, and uh, a dad takes his young girl to a concert, and he slowly finds out through a very informative, like the most informative of all time, merch desk worker that there the police presence outside surrounding the building is there because they believe that the butcher is there. They definitely could have come up with some more original serial killer things, but the the butcher is a serial killer who's there and they plan to trap him at the concert because they have basically they have descriptions. They're monitoring all the exits, they're checking everybody that's coming out and they're looking for this guy. This is a twist that's in the trailer. We find out that Josh Hartnett's character is allegedly the butcher because he pulls out his phone and he he's watching a video of a dude he has trapped in his basement and he's like doing that weird American psycho when he sees, you know, Paul Allen's card and uh, sweating and getting all excited and shit. So we get the idea that he is the butcher. I'll say this. It's got all the Shyamalanisms, all of them. Uh, it, again, if you love Shyamalan and his whole thing, you'll love this movie. If you hate him, you're going to find a lot to be annoyed about with this movie. Characters are once again weird. Josh Hartnett himself, I thought he was amazing in the movie. And trust me, give him the second half of the film. Give him grace the first half of the film. Um, because the first half of the film, when, when it's all dad stuff, he is so over the top. And to me, this is on purpose, and I get what he was doing with this performance. I think some will not. He's very over the top in the first half, like super gangly, like goofy, over the top, magoo type of dad things that he's doing. But it makes sense when you get into the second half of the film for sure. And I just thought the second half of the film, he killed it. I thought it asked him to do some really interesting things. I thought it gave Josh Hartnett, because he's always kind of like, I don't want to say he's a straight man, you know what I mean? But like, uh, <laughs> God damn it. I don't want to say he's like, you know, just a straight, like average dude in most movies we see him in. But I can't, you, there's not many instances of Josh Hartnett just going off the cuff and, and really chewing the scenery and stuff like that. And he gets to do that a little bit here and he's so good at it. And it's so entertaining to watch him stretch. Uh, <laughs> it's so entertaining to watch him be so versatile and, 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 and I can't say anything as it's spoilers, but it was really good. He was really good in the movie. Um, that being said, there is, it's one of those movies where you have to suspend belief a little bit because everything goes perfectly for certain characters in this movie. And you're like, there's almost one out of a billion times that wouldn't have happened that way. But the the story just goes in such a way that, that you have to just be like, it's a movie. I'm just going to appreciate it. There's no way this person would have gotten away with that. But you're like, eh, 
whatever, it's a movie. So it's it is possible and it falls under the the land of possibility. Like when you go see Twisters or whatever, you know, and I'm like those windshields would have been blown out in a second. You just go like, "Hey, they must have special windshield crap on there or something." And it's it's sort of like that. So that didn't bother me, but it is there and it will bother certain people. If you're a stickler for like that wouldn't have ever happened. That person would have said this, or that person would have done this in real life. The movie's going to bother you a lot. Uh, but as an entertaining, just movie to watch it, if you're not a stickler about that stuff, you could have a really good time with it. I feel like it feels at times like the Hitman games, um, the the situations that our characters are put into and have to get out of and whatnot. It feels very Hitmanish, and that's super fun to watch happen. And then the end of the movie just really took it over the top, off the top rope for me. I, I love what they did at the end. Again, several moments at the end where you're like, they wouldn't have let you do that. You know what I mean? And then like that, you wouldn't have gotten away. There's several of those for sure. And if you really sit with a fine tooth comb and are like, well, here's why this doesn't work. I'm sure that you can pick this movie apart and, and learn to hate it. But I really enjoyed it. Is it perfect? God, no, it's not perfect at all. And there again, there's so many moments where characters do and say weird shit, uh, super close ups to their faces when they're just saying like weird stuff. But I like that about Shyamalan. I like that he's a weird fucking guy. And I, and I enjoy those things. So I enjoyed the movie a lot. It's a 7.5 out of me. You still can't ignore the many, many probably plot holes um, that are there. But I just I had a good time with it. And I think you will too if you're a Shyamalan and a Hartnett guy. Um, that's the main thing I took away from this is it's a cool idea for a movie. And it was really fun to watch Hartnett do his thing here. And uh, I even though I know all the twists and turns and everything that happened, I will. it's rewatchable just because of the ending and because of um, what what it could be and because of the interesting questions that I asked and Hartnett's performance. So 7.5 out of 10 for me. I liked it a lot. I don't know if I said a single coherent thing here. I just woke up. I love your all's fucking faces. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Hello, listener. Do you like scary movies? What's your favorite scary movie? Well, Jay and Mike like scary movies, too. You should go and subscribe to their podcast. We watched a movie. Because if you don't, I'll gut you like a... Well, I think you get the idea. Enjoy yourselves while you still can.